This film proves that fans are much better at creating Star Wars content than Lucasfilm. Hey everyone, this is Justin Proper here, and today I'm going to be talking about Kenobi, a Star Wars fan film, which was written by Jamie Costa, and for those of you who think it's a bit familiar, um, he actually released a few years ago a Han Solo fan film, and he did a fantastic job playing Harrison Ford, or, or playing Han Solo, um, and kind of getting all of the, uh, the, all the mannerisms, the wit, and the humor right, and it was a, a relatively well done fan film. I enjoyed it better, better than the fan film that was Solo, a Star Wars story. Um, and he was much more charismatic. Uh, he did a great job on that. And then in this film, it's really no different. It's, uh, it, and actually, I think it's in some ways, it's a lot better production wise than the Solo film was. But uh, we'll get into that in just a second. Um, but by the way, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. If you like this video, go hit the like button. All that fun stuff. Um, so anyways, going back to the fan film. Basically what happens is Obi-Wan is trying to reach out to Qui-Gon. I guess after the five or six years between this film and uh, episode three. He's been trying to reach out. He's been kind of looking after Luke making sure he's all right, um, making sure, like, oh, when's the right time to pass on the, his father's lightsaber to him? And uh, Owen Lars confronts him, and he says, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be around us much anymore. The Empire is going to be approaching Tatooine soon, so it's best that you get on a transport and get the hell out of here, because if you're going to be here, that puts Luke in danger, because they're going to find out this sort of connection, and... If they find out that Luke is even here, um, they're going to start questioning us, and it's just not going to be a pleasant situation. We have to really protect Luke's uh, identity right now, which sort of, I don't really understand why why they just kind of say like, oh yeah, we have a nephew, his parents died, but I, I guess just reasons, so that part didn't really make sense to me, um, but then... He considers it, and he's like, yeah, you know what? Uh, putting the kid in potential danger is not a good idea. And Obi-Wan, at, at this point, he's kind of in a place where it's insinuated that he's seriously losing hope for a variety of reasons. Um, first off, he's unable to reach Qui-Gon via the Force. Um, he's uh, The Empire's on, on their way to Tatooine. Owen's becoming a bit upset with him, and he thinks of him as some sort of crazy hermit, and that's not a, a good look, I guess, and, he, you know, he wants to get along with him, I imagine, but it's just not really, you know, they, they, they the kind of relationship they have is very consistent with uh, how they were in episode four, like, oh, yeah, he's a, some crazy hermit, um, and then Ben's like, oh, that's your uncle talking, you know, he has no idea what he's talking about, and so there's this sort of tension between the two characters, um, and then, uh, you know, and plus his mere presence uh, is already putting Luke in a serious life, you know, potentially life-threatening situation if the Empire were to ever find out, uh, let alone if he started training Luke at such a young age, because Luke at this point probably wouldn't understand uh, just the significance of Order 66 and what kind of serious repercussions that could happen if he was careless and decided to show off the Force with his friends or something like that. Uh, that would be a really terrible situation. So it, it puts Obi-Wan in this uh, kind of, in a really rough situation where he doesn't know quite what to do. And at this vulnerable moment, he decides that he's, he's going to leave, he's going to get out of here, and he goes out in the middle of the night in a sandstorm and just chucks Anakin's lightsaber off a cliff because... The lightsaber has not been through enough. But in all honesty, unlike the uh, unlike episode 8 and 9, it feels like there's a reason, more of a, an understandable reason why he decides to do that and it's justifiable and it makes sense, but uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, so he just throws it and uh, then he sees some Tusken Raiders there. And uh, he gets kind of into a scrimmage there. So right as he chucked it off, he's like, 
oh shoot, I might need this to save my life. And then he uses the force, kind of reaches out, kind of like Thor reached out with his uh, for his hammer in Endgame. He catches it, and then the Tusken Raiders just knock him out, and that's it. They don't they don't take the lightsaber, they don't do anything to him. They just knock him out, which I thought was kind of silly, but whatever. Um, and then uh, it cuts back to the Lars homestead where uh, there's a bunch of stormtroopers coming in and they're investigating them and they're led by Captain Legus, who is played by James Arnold Taylor, who plays, of course, Obi-Wan. Uh, he voices him in uh, Star Wars, uh, The Clone Wars, and of course, Rebels. And uh, in a way, having his mere presence there is kind of a way of him giving his blessing to this film. And that's something that was really cool because uh, there's a point where Obi-Wan, he wakes up and then he senses that, you know, there's dangers. He's the high, the TIE fighters are heading towards uh, the Lars homestead. Not really. He just kind of like senses the danger and he runs towards them. And uh, they hide Luke in uh, the little speeder under a blanket, but then they discover him after they lied and said, oh, it's just the two of us. Um, and, uh, Obi-Wan says, no, you don't need to see identification. You don't need, you don't need anything. You can go about your business. And then Liga starts questioning him. And then it gets to a point where he tries to put a Jedi mind trick on him, but it's not quite working, which for me didn't, now that I think about it, didn't quite work for me either because Obi-Wan's a very powerful Jedi. And he's also doing this with the moment, like under his upper body, making it very obvious instead of doing it down here. So I think that could have been a little bit better. Um, and so um, Owen just decides to take out his blaster and just shoots Captain Legus, and they get into a fight with all the stormtroopers. Um, and this is after, by the way, when they're questioning Obi-Wan, when he says, like, oh, no, that I'm backtracking a little bit. So Obi-Wan comes, and he says uh, to, to everyone, like, yeah, you don't need to see them. The, the, oh, no, no, the boy is okay. So once they discover the boy, they said, oh, no, that's my, uh, that's my nephew. Oh, what about his parents? I'm like, oh, they're, they're dead, unfortunately. It's like, where are you from? Oh, no, we're just passing through, and he's avoiding the questions. Then he gets suspicious, and then he tries to... He gets searched, and they find the lightsaber that he has. It, for some reason, he didn't bring his own lightsaber when he was going out earlier. I guess he was just going to throw Anakin's off the cliff and just not have his own, because then he wouldn't have... But then he wouldn't have reached out and grabbed it. Um, but uh, anyways... Um, so they get into... A, like a little blaster fight and Obi-Wan takes the lightsaber and kills pretty much all of them uh, make sure that and uh, ba basically saves uh, Owen and Baru and Luke and uh, he leaves one stormtrooper alive and he tells him to uh, go about his business to say like oh no everything's fine here um, let me see real quick I'm looking at my notes here um, yeah, so he attempts the Jedi mind trick and he doesn't fall for it at all and in a panic Owen just shoots the guy. Um, Owen and Brew witness Obi-Wan showing off some awesome Jedi skills, which I think I'm pretty sure they have not seen before, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Saves their lives um, and uses the Jedi mind trick on the last remaining stormtrooper and tells him that they had a they had a, some kind of a they had a run in with the Sand People and they you know they they lost lost a number of lives and uh, and the area is of no interest. And, uh, which, yeah, that's a verbatim. Like, this area, this is, you, this is no interest. Everything's fine here. Oh, and drop your blaster. <laughs> and, um, which keeps, uh, the Lars uh, homestead free of stormtroopers and free of Imperial run-ins for the time being. And then, um, Melly goes back, puts the lightsaber away. That's, I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, and, uh, so overall, um, it's an interesting story. Uh, I think Obi-Wan's conflict and not being able to reach out to Qui-Gon and kind of losing hope and showing his vulnerability was a really big plus for me. Um, and going a little bit more in depth with that, it just, um, to me, it makes perfect sense. Throwing the lightsaber away, the, the reason why this makes sense to me personally is because, you know, his... He wants to, if he's going to be going away, if he's detaching himself from from Owen and uh, Baru and Luke, may as well give up the saber. Um, but, and and I guess after, uh, the reason why it makes sense to me, and it doesn't make sense really to, for, uh, for it in episode eight or nine, 
was um, I think because of the history between him and Anakin, and he wants to just just get rid of that. And I kind of like that internal conflict. There's not, and he's really trying to reach out to his master. And they say that there was a voiceover of Qui Gon somewhere. I must have missed that. Um, but overall, I thought the special effects were fantastic. Uh, the set design looked amazing. They did a great job replicating the Lars homestead, or at least uh, as much as they could um, with the moisture farms. And the music was... The music. The music was not only phenomenal, but it was also very much original and unique to this film, which I absolutely loved. Um, all the acting was fantastic. Um... One complaint that I do have is, uh, I mean, obviously, Jamie Costa, who plays Obi-Wan, he's not Ewan McGregor, and it's pretty obvious here, but I do feel like he did a, a decent job with the look. You can't really change his face too much. It, it is what it is, but um, he, had, he had the voice nailed down, and I think because he's working with James Arnold Taylor, he was maybe giving him some pointers. Maybe not so much on set. That would have been... I imagine that would have been kind of weird, but it was kind of cool seeing two Obi-Wans kind of interacting with each other. That was really cool for me. Um, and the voice uh, that Jamie Cuss had was pretty spot on. Um, but yeah, overall, I think this was very... Uh, it, I mean, I I really enjoyed it. It was an excellent film. So yeah, I would uh, highly encourage you all to, uh, if you haven't already, uh, go ahead and check it out. Um, I basically spoiled it all for you, but uh, if you're... If you still think it sounds kind of cool, like it plays out a lot better than how I'm describing it. Um, but yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed this film and I encourage anybody to go ahead and check it out because it is a very, it was a very pleasant surprise. And once again, it is proving that the fans are so much better at making Star Wars content than Lucasfilm is. And I could not say that enough because... After seeing the rise of Skywalker, I just see all this wasted potential, and maybe, maybe it's because uh, the fan film aspect is attached to this that makes me a little bit more lenient on it. But that being said, I mean it's not without its flaws. But I mean it's it's more like yeah, I mean it's a fun little like story, but it's it's really you, the feel of Star Wars is what is important and I think he got the the feeling of watching Star Wars he, I think he got it right uh, cuz I felt like I was watching a Star Wars film which is I think the number one most important aspect of anything related to Star Wars it has to feel like itself and if it's not if it's detached then it, it there's something that just isn't right and it's not working and for the sequel trilogy, that was mostly the case. Because, um, again, it's not just with characters, but it's also, you know, just theming and character consistency. Um, and, I don't know, and just having its own original score as, as opposed to just having uh, the same kind of, you know, few little uh, licks here and there. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, overall, this was an excellent film. I'd encourage everyone to go check it out. And if you liked it, uh, if you liked this video, once again, hit the like button. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. Click the bell for notifications. Click all the buttons. Click all of them. That would be greatly appreciated. And comment down below what you thought of the fan film. Because I thought it was great. And I want to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you all so much. Thank you very much. And as always, have a great day. Mm -hmm.